March the 26th, 2021. Guys, you're looking at a map, Africa and Europe and Asia. And uh, you, many of you know that for the last three days, that one of the largest cargo ships on the planet has it got turned sideways in the Suez Canal. And that's right here in the Egyptian section and Africa's to your left, but in Saudi Arabia to your right. But it's a major um, transportation route for a lot of goods. And if you think about it, a lot of people in Asia, the shippers from all of Asia, China, Japan, everything, they'll come If in this area will bring their freight through the Suez Canal and out into the Atlantic. This route is 6,400 miles. Ships are backed up on both ends of this massive ship blockage right there so some are deciding to take the route around uh, southern africa called the cape of good hope and so instead of 6400 miles you got 11,300 miles to travel instead of 14 days you got 24 days not only that being a sailor and loving the ocean and the water for you since i was a kid i've read of the shipwrecks and extremely rough weather off the Cape of Good Hope. You got the Atlantic and the Pacific clashing together there. You can, and so just think about that. And if you've ever uh, tried to get your ship or your boat or your sailboat out of a harbor with incoming uh, tides and outgoing currents, there's a lot of problems there. And here you have the clash of the two largest oceans on the planet. And the, But the main thing about that is the cost. We're dealing with an inflationary rate that's um, skyrocketing right now so when you add days of freight cost of fuel labor time delay then we are going into a time on this planet that uh, hasn't been seen before because every for years a lot of people have relied on the shipping of things that you order from all over the world just on your internet at home and then the major suppliers that build uh, projects, cars, everything else, the oil, natural gas, all of that is being blocked and the price is going to skyrocket. And we know that the U.S. is not on the best grounds as far as financial backing in the sense that when you, uh, you have this fiat currency and you're just printing more than you have to back up, that increases the inflation rate. And many of you know it if you've been trying to buy wood lumber for a home or repairs or food now what's interesting is even though it's not uh, the technical uh, Passover coming up this weekend because they set that date but that date can never be set until certain things happen guys and uh, that's the ripening uh, of the barley and the time of the year in the spring but anyway regardless of that and we do have our first full moon coming up a spring. But uh, we're going into Passover. Some call it Easter, which is a pagan holiday. It's an, that is the opposite of Passover. Easter is when you're worshiping eggs, which is a sign of fertility, and bunny rabbits, which are a sign of fertility. You are going into a pagan, pagan worship of the god Easter. But that's not what the video is about. But I do want to say this. What was the first Passover? It wasn't when Christ came into uh, Jerusalem. It was when uh, Moses was telling Pharaoh to let his people go. And that Passover, God told Moses to tell everybody to put the blood of the lamb on your doorpost, the lintel, and that with the spirit of death that was about to come through Egypt, would see that and would bypass your home and your and your farm and your cows what happened right at, we know the story there firstborn of egypt were the ones afflicted what happened right after that moses took his people across the red sea took god's people across the red sea how did he do that it's because this area was blocked moses raised his staff God was there, and that sea was blocked. It was parted. There wasn't any ships going through it at that time. Now, 
I'm not saying that's exactly what we're looking at, but guys, we're in some very dangerous times. We see what has happened here in the U.S. Every one of you know it. And it's happened all over the world. Several things um, between politics and diseases. But right now we're dealing with a situation that is blocking that passage. And sometimes, and if you read, um, our Lord is a warrior. And when the people that are in charge of the planet think that they have complete control, he can take over, if you understand what I'm saying, and he will. And no, nothing can stand against that. But right now we're seeing that blockage, this passage. We're seeing a tremendous amount of conflict in this area. Ships getting bombed or, or missiles hitting ships, things like that. Been going on the tension building, the chaos, the order out of chaos they hope will come. But right now, I think it's very important. Let's look at a couple of the images. Now, this was an image, uh, I think, from yesterday. But you can see as the ship got sideways, it's much wider than the Suez Canal. And in the front of the ship, you have this huge ballast. It's like a big round tank for weight to keep that nose down. You've got 20,000 containers on this thing. Think about that. It somehow, something happened. I don't know if it lost an engine or whatever, but it plowed into one side. The back turned and got wedged into the other side. So this big, the big um, front ballast is embedded about 20 feet into the bank. They can't move it as of now. And it has blocked the passage of the Red Sea into the uh, Caribbean, excuse me, the Mediterranean. They're saying the uh, Suez Canal Authority or the SCA is looking forward to cooperating now with the U.S. to refloat the stranded container ship that has blocked the canal since Tuesday. So now we're into our fourth day. Very huge ship. Let's take a look at a couple of the other images. Now this is an image of the front of the bow of the boat and of this huge ballast. And you see it on some of the big oil carry, oil tankers, things like that. And you see an excavator trying to dig out this side so that they can try to pull it out. they got several tugs trying to pull this thing back to the left, if you're looking at this image, trying to pull that back in back, get the straight. It will not budge. On the other side, they have one of the largest dredges I've ever seen that have just come up the river or come up the canal and trying to dig out the other side. But every day, we're talking about, about $5 billion. That adds up very quickly. And the delay, that the cost, or, or that's just the freight. But when you start dealing with delays, the cost goes up. The cost of delays, people start canceling orders, things like that. Now, here's a great aerial view of what we're dealing with. Here is the front of the boat, the bow that you just saw the excavator trying to pull out is buried. That much weight, 20,000 containers plus the weight of the ship and the fuel, um, just plowed into it. Sometimes people want to do too much. They want to get too big. They want to build buildings too big and ships too big. This thing really should never have been allowed into the Suez Canal. Being a boater most of my life, you know engines go out. But this has blocked the route of the Red Sea. Right here to the top right is one of the largest dredges I've seen. Now in this picture, it was on the way. Now it is sitting right here on this side of the ship and uh, trying to dredge out enough on that side that tugboats can line up on the rear and pull backwards and line this thing back up. Now, getting it uh, unwedged is one problem. But if you guys have ever ran aground in the boat and, and uh, spun an anchor or done other damage to your motor system, sh um, your shafts, propellers, whatever it is, this thing, they may get it over to one side, but whether or not it can go... Uh, immediately go back into traveling and uh, back to work is another thing. But the main thing now is to get it pulled to one side or the other to let ships pass through. Now, here's a picture of that dredge I was telling you about. The guys, that's a large boat in itself. You can see it being maneuvered by the different tugboats. 
pushed up to that very edge of the front of the bank, trying to ex uh, excavate it out, dredge it out, and get it back to the back of the boat out into the water. Some of the aerial photographs, it almost looks like an oil spill to where, where they're dredging from the bottom. You know, it's just murky water. But uh, I've seen these boats many times down in the Pensacola Bay area and Orange Beach and back through there. But this is a very huge boat. But if you notice, notice uh, the actual ship's name is Ever Given, but Evergreen is the company name. And it is the, uh, I think it again, some of the largest ships on the planet. And just one more aerial image uh, since the dredge has came down the canal and is lined up with the front of the boat and they're trying to get it out. But my point goes again to this, that uh, that's way too much weight, too much size to be moving through this narrow of a water channel. Look at that, guys. You can The con tower and the, where they drive the ship from is barely sticking up above these containers. And looking at the one of the uh, ocean transport sites, the traffic jam is here where the yellow arrow is. Again, ever given, both sides are backed up. Look at this, and ships are anchored everywhere. This um, is just adding to the pressure that's on the planet right now. It's going to lead, and uh, it w excuse me, it will be one of the economic leads into more inflationary prices. But again, our Lord is a warrior, the ultimate warrior. And we're looking at a lot of things going on now in this part of the country and all over the world. So just keep your eyes on it, guys. I just want to do a heads up. Most of you are aware of the shipwreck. I wanted to go into a few more details. We're watching it. Remember, the ultimate warrior is your father, and he is in charge. So keep your heads up as the demons try to take over. Be safe.